Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Ako Mashino from Japan. First of all, I express my gratitude to the Executive Committee for kindly invitation to this wonderful conference and to the audience attending at my presentation. My presentation is titled Sangao, a Contemporary Platform for the Evolving Tradition of Balinese Gunderwaya. This paper discusses modernization in teaching and learning Gunderwayan, a Balinese traditional music ensemble form. Gunderwayan consists of one or two pairs of bronze metallophones and is traditionally performed during rituals or as accompaniment to Wayang Kulit, shadow puppetry. Because of its complicated musical structure and demanding technique, it has been considered one of the most difficult gamelan to perform. Before the 2000s, there were only a few child Gundirwayan players. Today, however, it is not difficult to find children skillfully playing the music throughout Bali. Adrian Vickers writes that Balinese have their own distinctive versions of being modern, describing the quality of being modern, an Indonesian word which originated from Dutch meaning modern, as a form, process, or experience associated with progress and development. Here, I focus on Sangar private organizations for teaching the music as primary agents transforming the pedagogy and performing style of Gundirwayan to become modern and bringing changes to the musical ecosystem. The most popular path to learning Gundelwayang is that one personally asks a senior musician to teach, arranges the dates, and visit the teacher's home for instruction. This type of private lesson is still common, and until the late 2000s, it was the only way to learn the music. While I have often observed Balinese studying with senior musicians, some say that it is not comfortable for Balinese to personally ask specialists to teach them their valuable knowledge unless they have a close relationship with them. Some musicians added that elder musicians in the past were rather stingy, declining to share their knowledge with others. The instruments were expensive and only a limited number of people could afford them at home. Thus, access to Gundirwayan study was heavily dependent on personal circumstances and available social network. Traditionally, it was uncommon to pay lesson fees in cash, although this is not to suggest that teaching is free of charge. Instead, learners usually show their gratitude by bringing rice, sugar, coffee, and so forth, or by offering their labor for lectures held in the teacher's home. The exchange process could be indirect and might continue for years after the actual lessons in some cases. Even today, teachers seldom set the price for their private lessons. How much the apprentice owes to the teacher is assumed to be immeasurable in monetary terms. Sangha refers to a space and organization for performing arts, usually directed by an individual owner artist, most often an experienced performer and alumni of the Institute of Indonesian Art, Institute Suni Indonesia, or ISI. Many Sangha have regular classes for children, while some Sangha focus primarily on performances. The majority of the students at Sangal Gundilwayan are students of elementary or junior high school age. The lessons are held according to a fixed schedule and the students pay regular fees for participation. Sangal in Bali first emerged in the 1970s and flourished since the 1990s, but Sangal dedicated to Gundilwayan have appeared only since the 2000s, when competitions in the music gained popularity in South Bali. In 2005, the first Gundilwayan competition was held as part of the annual Youth Art Week in Denpasar, and the other local competitions followed. As I have described elsewhere, these competitions successfully motivated many children to learn the music. Many parents brought their children to the Gundilwayan specialists who opened Sangal, arranged lesson schedules, and purchased additional instruments to accommodate many students. Today, more than a dozen Sangal are actively teaching children in Denpasar. Since 2013, the Bali Art Festival has 
also held an annual valley-wide Gundilwayan competition, which enhanced Sangal development over broader regions. Competitions and Sangal of Gundilwayan have developed in parallel since then. Here I describe two Sangha lessons in Gundilwayan which I observed during my fieldwork in 2018 and 2022. Sangal Gansadewa in North Denpasar was established in 2008 by Nikutu Tsuriyatini, a former instructor at ISI. She said more than 400 children had been registered, meaning that they had come to the Sangal at least once and their names and addresses were documented. And around 50 students were actively coming to the lessons at the time of my visit in 2018. When I visited the Sangal, 16 instruments set in Laos fully occupied the room of her family property. The Sangal was open on Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 4, while the students accompanied by their parents came in twos and trees and replaced each other. Various pieces were performed a few times each, and the students constantly replaced each other. While waiting their turn, they chatted with each other, buying and eating snacks or just stared blankly at the lesson. Even though many do not attentively observe the lessons of others, their presence and hearing the music would provide an opportunity for legitimate peripheral participation, that is, to unconsciously prepare an image of what they would learn in the future. Suriyatini put the list of 32 pieces to be learned on a wall of the loom, categorized by complexity into five classes. Most pieces on the list belonged to the so-called steel kaimas, kaimas style repertoire, which she inherited from her father, the late Iwayan Konola, who was respected as a master of Gundilwaya. While Konola also identified some basic pieces to teach beginners and some others for experienced players, he never tried to systematically categorize or characterize his repertoire. It is basically Suryatini's own initiative to clearly categorize her repertoire and systematize the teaching methods according to their complexity and requisite performance, performing skills, while other Sangal teachers around Denpasar also employ similar classification systems so that the students have clear targets at each stage and can proceed gradually, step by step. Sangar Suara Murti was organized in 2013 in Skawati Gyanyar by Ikutut Budastra, a Gundilwayan specialist and graduate of EC. He has directed Gundilwayan teams representing Gyanyar Regency in Bali Art Festival competitions several times and won first prize in 2013 and 15. According to Buddha's wife, around 150 students have registered in the Sangal and 100 are actively studying today. When I visited the Sangal in 2018, Buddha and his young assistant were teaching 14 beginners in one class. According to Buddha, three of them were complete beginners and the others had just started to learn a week before. They tried to play a short entry piece together that Buddha composed for beginners. After Buddha demonstrated melody, they tried to play together, but soon they drifted apart, as most of the students only partially understood what they should do. Buddha and his assistant went to the confused students to teach them one by one, indicating the keys to be struck from the opposite side, while some other students tried to play by themselves. After Buddha and the assistant went around, they tried to start together again, but the group soon fell apart. This repeated in the same way several times. <laughs>
Uda and his assistant were amazingly patient and highly concentrated with each, each targeted student amid the many instruments chaotically ringing out. When I again visited his Sangha in 2022, they had stopped teaching the large class and shifted to private or small group teaching, which he called Privat, private, which, Buddha said, more parents preferred, as they found it more efficient. Now his daughter and senior students had become his assistants, teaching one or two children each, simultaneously but separately at different locations in his family compound. This enabled all teachers and students to be more focused and able to concentrate on each other than in a larger class. Most Sangha classes are basically open to anyone who would like to join, even if he or she does not have a personal connection to the teacher. On the day of Sangha activities, many people gather at the teacher's house, the students' parents attentively observing their children's lesson for or recording videos, their little brothers and sisters, the teacher's family members supporting the Sangha activities as assistant teachers or secretaries. All are involved in the activities developing a social network. The uniform t-shirts with Sangha logos also contribute to a sense of belonging to one community. Trophies, which some students won at competitions, are usually displayed in the Sangha rehearsal space as an honor for the Sangha as a whole. According to I Kutut Agu Swastika, a Gundirwaya musician leading Sangar Swasti Swala in Denpasar, the most common motivation for students to start learning Gundirwaya at his Sangha is to participate in competitions. Competitions have provided opportunities for young musicians to appear in public and gain social attention, which motivates them to learn the music further. In addition, if the children successfully win prizes, they earn advantage points for entering junior high or high school. Even if they do not win a prize, their parents are very proud to see their children performing the music on stage. Sangha significantly supports them in preparing for competition and thus have contributed to the flourishing of competitions as well by supplying many of the participants. While the Sangha lesson fee is usually inexpensive and affordable, the income from Sangha activities as a whole is significant, as it enables the owners to buy more instruments, employ assistant teachers, and support their lives. Fixed payment systems clearly setting fees simplified and modernized the traditional gifting custom in which teachers never set the price so that their special knowledge became more accessible to the learners and their parents. The development of Sangha has had an impact on the music industry as well. Sangha students buy their own pangol beaters to use at home and bring them to Sangha lessons and today most have their own instruments at home. Additionally, if the children participate in competitions, parents need extra money for participation fees, makeup, hair setting, and costume rental. The growth of Sangha has been seen as a consequence of a rising middle class and aligned with the performer's desire to pursue their interests more independently. I would add that a fluent parent's passion for their children to develop competence in performing arts is another powerful factor promoting Sangha activities. As the development of Sangha Gundelwayan is actually supported by many parents who spare no expense for their children. As previous studies have described, Balinese artists have always taught their arts through performing together. This means that, that students learn a piece through intensive observation and listening to their teacher's performance while playing together with them. This playing together pedagogy basically endures today. Even in the large Sangha classes I described, the teachers play together with students and also often individually attend to a targeted student so that the student can perceive the body movements and sound of the teacher directly at very close range. 
traditional Balinese pedagogy also favors a holistic approach. In 1937, Colin McPhee observed that when teaching children, a gamlam musician performed complete musical patterns without dividing them into short units and a tempo. Michael Bacon also described his drum teacher's holistic approach, citing McPhee's observation that the teacher is merely the transmitter who just shows the complex design hung on the wall and tells his student to copy it. I agree with Bacon and McPhee from my experience as a gamelan student. I also often felt as if my teachers kept going ahead unmindful of me. However, as I have observed the lessons of others since the 1990s, I found that most of the Gundiruwayan teachers, whether in Sangha or privately at home, were actually considering the students' specific competence. Experienced musicians always carefully observe and evaluate each other's competence while playing together, whether in teaching or in performance. The teachers, to a greater or a lesser degree, compromise their holistic approach, even though they might still appear to the student's eye to be showing the complex design hung on the wall. How far they actually compromise may depend greatly on personality and circumstances. There are many stories about short-tempered gamelan teachers. However, these Sangal teachers are generally calm and patient, make conscious efforts to foster children. They divide the phrase into short units and repeat them one by one before proceeding. They physically touch the student's hands to correct and indicate where to strike. They often verbally communicate with the students, asking, Suda, already? or encourage them with words such as bagus, good, or yeah, yes. While traditional pedagogy is persist, Sangal teachers have also developed new methods and tips. For example, Suryatini has developed a unique method to teach students how to correctly grasp the pango. First, she taught her students to make fists and open two fingers, then placed the pango in the correct position there, and then adjusted the other fingers to the right positions. When both hands were ready, she told them to watch her demonstration of how to make a sound. Then she told the students strike the keys, raise the hands, and mute the keys step by step, verbally saying the necessary body movement using kinesthetic terms. Let's see video excerpt. Tak duduk ya, duduknya. Kali ini tempat, okey tempat duduk ya. Tapi kakinya silang ya. Ah, kayak si Loda. Tegak. Hmm, tu ganteng. Hmm, tu ya. Hmm, dia berdu. Ini ibu kata. Sekarang coba siap tangan kanannya mana? Ya, kan tangan kanannya pakai kayak mukul di 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 kepala tangannya, ni. Kau dah begini, ya kuat. Nah, bagus ya. Sekarang, ini kuatkan. Tunjuknya, nah, terus ke depan kencang ya. Nah, sekarang ibu masuk ini ni, kakinya tanggul kasih lubang dikit. Nah, pelan pelan. Tunjuknya mana? Tunjuknya mana? Tunjuk yang ketiga, tunjuknya, tulis dulu. Dah. Sekarang bengkokkan tunjuknya. Bentar. Ya, dah. Ya, ayam. Betul. Terus ibu jarinya sentuh sedikit tangkainya. Sudah. Ya. Sekarang yang tiga jarinya ini. Jari lingking, jari manis, dan jari tengah. Dibuka pelan-pelan. Nah, gitu ya. Dah. Dan sekarang panggulnya tangkainya dipegang sama ibu jari. Ya, sama tunjuk. Nah, terus ada sini. Nah, dah. Ini bagus. Diamin ya, jangan berobat. Diam. Sekarang sekarang yang ini dipukul. Coba dipukul yang ini. Lihat ibu dulu. Habis pukul, angkat. Angkat. Ulang lagi. Pukul. Angkat. Sekarang tutup dia dengan jari ini. Dengan jarinya tiga ini pakai tutup ya. Tutup ya. Pakai jari tiga, tutup. Ini, ya. Karena lagi, pukul, ku, yang ini, ku, ya, sama-sama, ku, tutup, pukul lagi, pu, tutup, tutup, tutupnya ini pakai jarinya.
Yang lagi. Kol ku. Ku. Dua lihat ibu dulu. Lihat ibu dulu. Tutup. Tutup. Nah, ya sama-sama aku kan. Ya. Another distinctive teaching style developed in Sangao is that for competition. Gundir Wayang competition has developed a specific performing style to efficiently demonstrate the performer's skillfulness in order to win the prize. The performers usually play at a faster tempo than in rituals, emphasizing cohesion and accuracy, and displaying their competence visually through decorative gesticulations. Before competition became popular, at the point when the student could understand the melody and was barely able to follow the teacher, the lesson usually ended or the teacher would proceed on to another piece. Further, teachers seldom teach or explain in detail the delicate movements of the pango or subtle adjustment to the dynamics or tempi. Spontaneous reactions to their co-performance on the spot, individual creation of new ornamentation, and subtle hand movements could not be taught but should be acquired through and during the performances. In contrast, the performance on the competition stage is the complete, finished product of a longer process of rehearsals, in which the tempi, timing, breath, and body movements are perfectly elaborated and fixed before the performance, so that the musicians can play in perfect synchrony. Particularly for high-stakes competitions, teachers may intensively and generously teach the techniques they have, as the students represent their sangha as a whole. Let's see a video clip of Buddha's rehearsal for competition in 2013 and the video clip of the competition performance which won the first prize at that competition. <laughs> The Sangao teacher is virtually the director and conductor of the competition performances, which are the product of collaboration between the teacher and students.
All Sangha teachers I met during my fieldwork emphasized that their motivation to organize Sangha was to keep alive their tradition, their own regional performing style, repertoire, aesthetics, and philosophy, which they inherited from their family or forerunners. They expect that their Sangha children will somehow carry on what they are performing today. Teaching the basics to beginners, especially child beginners, naturally demands extraordinary perseverance and specific methodology. Many established musicians actually admit that they cannot or will not teach beginners. The musicians who organize Sangha have a special passion to nurture the next generation. On the other hand, Sangha shape a new type of social culture space for experiments that may transform traditional pedagogy, custom, and performing style, and produce a new aesthetic value. Brita Heimer writes that modernization in Balinese music is an alteration of past traditions, adapting them to modern needs. Two different but interrelated approaches to Sangha, carefully teaching the basics to beginners or refining and elaborating competition performance, embody the Balinese concepts of continuing their tradition and becoming modern at the same time. In an anniversary event in 2015, Denpasar City included a massive Gundurwayan performance by 100 children. Gyanyar also followed that example, with 150 child players to which Sangar of Suryatini and Buddha contributed. Each regency showcased amazing numbers of child musicians proficiently playing the old, difficult, and sacred music. These massive performances, in which many musicians performed together in a cohesive manner, were uncommon in the past and would be impossible without the development of sangals, which supplied many players who learned the same piece in the same style as well as many instruments with the same tuning. The performances at public events presumably display the traditional values in a modern manner. While Large-scale teaching and performance were not allowed during the COVID-19 outbreak. The Sangha Gundelwayan continued their teaching activities, avoiding larger classes, dividing their students into smaller groups, wearing masks, and using hand sanitizer. Most Sangha continued their classes. Online competitions were also held so that the children kept their motivation to learn. When the emergency declaration was lifted in 2022, competitions and other performance opportunities for Sangha returned. For example, Buddha's Sangha performed Gundilwayan as a group in the temple ceremony at Puradalam Skawati in September 2023, where 20 instruments were played together and around 70 children participated in total. Sangha are a contemporary platform not only for teaching and learning Gundilwayan to keep the tradition alive, but also for creating new types of performance. They simultaneously produce a driving force to continue the tradition and transform it to be modern. Thank you very much for your attention.